welcome to a new garden vlog. So I'm gonna get straight into my garden chores. And the first thing that I actually need to do is I need to um, finish um, clearing out my new radish bed. And I'll show you guys exactly where that is here at my home garden. And I need to take out rose bushes, which I think that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So I have to take out several of those and then just rake the bed flat and then I'm going to plant some radish seeds. So here are the old rose plants and it actually wasn't, I'm kind of out of breath, but it freed up a lot of space and it actually wasn't that hard to take them out. I just needed to really get in there with the spade and the fork and lift up the roots. And there's still a few rose bushes here, like this one's really pretty. Um, but I have so much space now for my radishes, so I'll probably stop putting the radishes in the ground about here where this brick is. And yeah, I'm just going to put this stuff into the green bin because I'm not going to be composting this. All right, you guys, so now that I've cleaned and prepped the bed, I have my seeds. And let's see, I'll be sowing these radish. These are called Early Scarlet Globe. And then the classic 
French breakfast radish and watermelon radish. And then I have three packages of turnips, which I think will do good. So all I'm gonna do is just use this stick, this bamboo cane, and I'm going to just mark out the areas where I want the seeds, dig out the little burrows, and then put the seeds in there and water the bed, and that's it. So just, I just put the bamboo cane like that. So it's nice and even. And then I'll do the other row right here. It's about a, probably like 11 inches, 10 inches away from each other. Hello you guys, so I finished what I needed to do with the radishes and the turnips on the side, um, on the newest bed that I dug over. And um, yeah, it was pretty, way easier than I actually thought. And it is watered, seeds are in and it's watered. I ended up using one, two radish packets and two turnip seeds. So I have one turnip packet left. Uh, which I'll succession sow those once one start coming up I'll um, put those in but anyways I wanted to show you guys my potatoes <clears throat> they're already chitting and I'll explain to you guys what chitting is okay so these are my uh, I was gonna say tomatoes uh, these are my potatoes and these are seed potatoes um, that I got and um, I got from my local Home Depot which is a garden center if you're not familiar and this is a specific seed. So this side um, from here on out, these are all Yukon Gold potatoes. And I've grown these last year and they're so delicious. And then on this side is a mixed variety. Uh, this is the red skin potato, which is really delicious. And then I have a couple of purple potatoes. Now what I do is I just let the potato go until it chits, which basically that is a chit, but I do want this to get longer. So what I want to do is just knock that one off there and this little tiny one, I'll knock that off. And this is where the plant is actually going to grow up. So when you plant so for example, let's say that this is your pot, you have your soil, you want to put your potato like that so this can grow up. So then what you do is, once you see a little bit of green growth, you just put your, you put your soil on top, you bury it like that first, you see some green growth, you put some more soil, you see some more green growth, you put some more soil, and again and again until the plant basically dies off so let me get this guy out and um, yeah this looks like a very very healthy red potato I do want these to be longer I want these to be probably two or three times this size right here and that's why I just have them out in a very dry area this area is not going to get wet. You don't want your potatoes to be getting wet at all. You want them to stay dry. And you can put them in the sun if you'd like. I've done that before and it's totally worked to get the chits growing faster if it's too cold. If you have a greenhouse, that's perfect. Go ahead and pop your potatoes in the greenhouse. And uh, yeah, um, I have a good amount of potatoes here. This is more potatoes than I grew last year and last year I got a really good harvest. So I wanted to double my harvest this year since I'll be selling some of these at market. And yeah, let me, let's see, what else is going on right now? I have some red arrow radish microgreens. 
which need a little bit of water. It is going to, we are going to have a frost tonight. It's going to be 39 degrees. So that's going to be the coldest night we've had so far. So I do, hey Curly, Curly say hi. All right, he's eating something. I don't know what he's eating. What are you eating? He's probably eating the fertilizer. My dogs like to do that. Um, I have a lot of some good seedlings here. Not quite ready to transplant, but they will be soon. I have more microgreens growing in here. These are all broccoli and spicy salad mix. And over here in this greenhouse, that is my greenhouse with my seedlings. And then over here is the greenhouse with the microgreens. So I just have these covered so it doesn't get um it doesn't get too hot. These are actually harvestable right now, but I don't go back to market for um six more days. So I'm hoping that these will still be really good and okay by then. Let's have a little taste test. Hmm. They do taste good. They're very mild. And yeah, I'm just gonna water. I'm gonna fill up the birdhouse with some more water because the I always find that the birds really like this bird bath. And here's inside my greenhouse. I should probably water them. That that is a uh, peas inside there. Fava beans have still haven't sprouted up, and more peas. And those are collard greens down there. Those are ready to transplant, looks like. Everything's doing good. I'm just gonna give, oh, I lost a lot, a good amount of my peppers because of the cold. I think the only two that are really gonna survive are these two large ones. And I think all of the rest of them are probably gonna die with the cold. And my strawberry is looking, not looking so good. Um, not sure why, actually. I think I just need to trim off the old leaves. I'm still getting some fruit off of these, which is cool. I think it just needs a good little trimming. Good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year. Today is January 2nd, and I'm out in the garden pretty early, and um, I need to get a head start because I have had a little vacation. It's never really vacation if you're working at home and have a garden, but like I just have been able to relax for the holidays, and now I need to get on and get chores done. <clears throat> Anyways, this is my new mug my sister got me for Christmas. She knows I love corgis and I think it's great. And it's a really large mug so it can hold like a couple cups of coffee, which is what I need every single morning throughout the day. <laughs> nice morning, it's quiet. So <clears throat> what I have on the agenda today is a lot of planting and a lot of not necessarily seed sowing but <clears throat> planting and um, uh, first thing I need to do is open up the greenhouses at night. I have been <clears throat> closing them, excuse me. At night I have been closing them just because it's in the 40s and I do want to keep the heat in and it looks like the soil is dry so they need to be watered. Just flip that over <clears throat> and you don't want your greenhouse to be a hot house. You do want your greenhouses to be <clears throat> open throughout the day so everything can get air so you can get stronger seedlings. 
need to fill up the bird bath. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's right. I do need to make more hummingbird food. <clears throat> but that <clears throat> involves me being inside. And let's go do the other greenhouse. I hear the hawks. I think my microgreens probably need a little bit of water. I think some of them do. Like this one. So I'll water them now. Alright you guys, so I didn't record the couple of chores that I was doing, but basically what I did is I went to the um, side of my garden where I keep a lot of my seedlings and I cleared out a lot of the ones that were dead which was like a good amount probably like two flats that were dead they didn't survive whatever but I did keep the strong seedlings which is about I have two over there that are still good that aren't ready to plant out and then I have another one here a tray of spinach and dill and it looks like two mustards and a lettuce seedling and that, all that stuff is going to be planted out today in the side garden. And then, so I keep all of the soil from the um, old seedlings. And I just put it in here. Look, I got some worms in it, which is good. And this will be used for other things. And, um, yeah, what I now I need to do is I... I just watered. I watered everything before the sun comes back here. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to be harvesting, so it's always good to water for me the day before I harvest. Um, so the plants are really nice and, and perky and good and healthy. And I have my little board right here, which I'll turn So this is just uh, things that I need to do. Um, I crossed off several of the things. I've already watered half the garden, so. I need to water the side garden, so I'll check part of that off. Plant out the dill, the dill, which is part of the winter seedlings. Plant out the spinach, which is that tray over there. I need to plant out that entire tray. That flat will probably take me about 45 minutes to an hour. Pot up cabbage. I do have some cabbage seedlings that need to be separated. And turn the compost, which I'm going to do that right now before it warms up. It's better to just do that before it gets warm because there is a lot of things in there and um, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I do need to trim uh, some of the butterfly and bee garden area and just need to trim it out and give it a nice little haircut and make it look a little more tidy so I can plant more uh, flowers and vegetables around that area. So before I head to the side garden, I want to get all of my chores done in the back garden. And one of those things is to turn my compost. So I'll show you guys. Um, there is, my compost is very full. And then my worm bin, I've been adding more <clears throat> to my worm bin. So let's check it out. So, um, yeah, it's not completely composted yet, but the worms, they'll know what to do, and they'll get in there and, um, break it down. So, basically what I want to do is just not taking any of the compost out. All I'm doing is just going in here. And I'm just kind of turning it. There's a lot of paper in here, which is good. I do want paper in here. I just stabbed an apple. What I want to do while I'm doing this is I want to promote air and circulation and oxygen in your compost bin. So 
and that things can break down. This is a little workout too. <laughs> this helps doing this. Helps the worms get on top, break everything down, take it down to the bottom. So it is a little lower, but now kind of you kind of compact it. And if I had a thermometer, I would take the temperature. And I don't. I need to go look for it, actually. I have one. I need to get it out. And it doesn't need any water because it's, it's pretty wet. Even though it doesn't look like it, it's wet underneath there. And all I'm going to do now is just put the lid on top. And that's it. Chore done. Okay, so I'm here on the side garden, and as you can see, this bed, there is some gaps, and that's where I'll be planting this extra spinach. And I know the spinach doesn't look that healthy, but once it goes into the bed that has a lot of nutrients, it will get bigger and start to thrive. But this time of the year, everything grows slow. So that's expected. But before I plant my spinach, I am going to plant out this dill, which I've been growing. I don't know if I put the date on here, but it's been growing for a long time. I'm going to put it here where a lot of my herbs are. Probably I'll plant it right there. My seedlings here, and they're very small. <clears throat> and I am going to plant them in clumps only because they're just really sp I feel like they'll do better in a clump and I cannot work with the gloves even though it's cold I'll just bury it like that and I'm burying them kind of deep actually Probably shouldn't bury them that deep, but oh, well. there's a grass here that's starting to evade. I need to go back and trim that out. Hello everybody and welcome back to another garden vlog clip. So I've already started my garden chores, work chores, whatever you want to call it. And um, I have a huge list I need to do today. Today it's supposed to reach about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's going to be warm. Uh, so it's a perfect time for me to start sowing my summer vegetables. I know what you're thinking, summer vegetables, what? Why are you sowing them now? But there are a few things that I can sow like eggplants. Um, some tomatoes I can start sowing and a cup and peppers because peppers take a really really long time and a couple other things but before I do that I actually have to get on with a tour that I've been putting off for probably a year <laughs> and that is repotting my blueberry plants I need to put my blueberry plants plants into larger pots so then that they can get even bigger because I know they're probably root bound um, and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna do that and that's gonna be on the side garden 
All right, so here I have my three um, items that I'm gonna be putting into their new pots. And as you can tell, they are, will be going into a larger pot. And I have three plants here. And what I'm gonna do is just add this compost potting soil mixture, some chicken manure, and this fruit berry vine food. Top it off with some soil. Oh, here's a worm. <clears throat> and that's it. <clears throat> that's all you have to do. And uh, yeah, they should be happy in there. All right, that's the last one potted up. The other two are hanging out over there. The hummingbirds are enjoying their food. All right, you guys, so my next task is kind of easy. It's uh, uh, harvesting my dried rosemary. So any of the rosemary, that fresh rosemary, that I don't sell at the farmer's market, I bring it back, I put it up on a shelf over here in the sun and it gets sun dried, and then I resell it as sun dried rosemary. And I hand pick, hand harvest everything. I just take the rubber bands off and I just go like this and then it falls into the bucket right here. 